All right, the next thing we'll talk about is how neoliberalism is an all-encompassing cultural paradigm. Under neoliberalism, everything is conceived of in terms of the market. These are headlines that I took from the New York Times after the fires that we had uh, in the summer of 2018 up here in Northern California. Um, and they're talking about the economic impact of climate change that, oh man, climate change is really gonna ruin the economy. And it shows the extent to which we view every problem, every issue in financial terms. Um, we, we have damaged our environment in such a way that it's question, the, the continued survival of our spe uh, species is questionable. And yet we're talking about what the financial impact of that is gonna be, right? It's like sitting in a burning house uh, talking about the insurance payout, uh, which sure, it might be relevant, but is it the biggest priority? Another really powerful example of how um, everything in the neoliberal system is is viewed in terms of return on investment uh, is this. Uh, this is a sign that an employee, uh, Walmart employee, uh, took a picture of and posted online. I have heard this sentiment expressed in many uh, business textbooks, and it's the idea that sexual harassment is bad because it has a negative impact on return on investment. So it's not the idea that we should treat human beings with dignity because they're human human beings worthy of dignity. We should treat human beings with dignity if it has a positive impact on return on investment. And there are times when treating people without dignity is better for ROI. So for example, um, bad labor conditions that we see in developing countries and Amazon warehouses, uh, that those people are treated without dignity because it's good for ROI. Um, so everything, our morality is really shaped by how uh, our behaviors impact return on investment. We also see freedom in regard to markets. So there was that course that uh, that case that went to the Supreme Court recently about whether a gay couple uh, could buy a cake from a baker, a Christian baker that didn't want to make them a gay marriage cake. Uh, it's we're we're arguing here about freedom. Uh, in terms of markets, am I free to buy this product? Uh, am I compelled to sell this product? We see the same thing uh, with the conceptualization of equality in a lot of ways in our society. Um, so freedom is how, how much access people have to markets, like the labor market. We often um, conceptualize equality as in, hey, our men and women earning the same are uh, people of different uh, races or ethnicities uh, being hired the same? Are they being promoted at the same rate? I'm not saying those aren't worthwhile discussions, but what I'm saying is, is that we're looking at freedom and equality in economic and financial terms within this uh, paradigm of neoliberalism. In our society, money is equated with speech, right? That everything, even freedom of speech, which I think most people would consider, you know, one of the most fundamental uh, human rights, is it's a part of the market. That it's money is uh, money is is speech, and the more money you have, the more freedom of speech that you have. Another uh, kind of aspect of looking at the world this way is that we see the outcomes of market forces as positive, uh, that, that we, it skews the way that our ethics and our, our moral perspective on the world. Um, so we can all agree that there are some places in um, developing countries where labor conditions are pretty atrocious. People working, you know, really long hours, often without breaks, um, getting paid very little, uh, being in poor living conditions, being separated from their families. Um, what we would consider pretty atrocious uh, working conditions. And yet when you talk to economists about this, they don't lament this fact. They don't see it as like, oh, this bad, uh, outcome of an otherwise pretty good system uh, that we need to correct. When you talk to economists about this, they say, no, this is a good thing, um, that we have created economic opportunity for these people that didn't have it before. So if, if I were to do this behavior on an individual level, if I told you that I had hired a Chinese immigrant to do, you know, 
10 to 12 hours of errands and yard work and housework for me a day, uh, six days a week, and I was gonna pay them $100 a month and they were gonna live in a cot in a shack behind my house, you would say, Tommy, you are a horrible person. And yet when we do it in a systematic way, we somehow are not only dismissive of the immorality of that, but it actually even twists the immorality of it. So we say, no, this is a good thing. I would posit to you that anything that is immoral on an individual level becomes more immoral at a systematic level, not less so. Um, and that if a system is systematically creating these unethical situations, then we should really question uh, that system itself. Maybe one of the most powerful examples of how neoliberalism shapes our perception of morality in our society is the case of Martin Shkreli. Uh, if you're familiar with Martin Shkreli, he uh, started a company and he purchased the patent for a life-saving drug, a drug that had been around for you know like 60 years or something. It's used to um, uh, treat a disease that's common amongst people that have compromised immune systems, so like people with advanced uh, HIV, for example. Uh, it is a life-saving drug. It's been around for a long time. It costs $13 a pill. His company bought it, and he jacked the price up to $750 a pill. Um, he went to jail. He is now serving prison time. He will be in jail for seven years. Did he go to jail? for price gouging dying people no that's totally fine that's legal that is acceptable within our neoliberal society he went to jail for defrauding investors or attempting to defraud investors um and i i think there's no clear example of the values that we have in our economic system where price gouging dying people for a profit that is okay and in fact you'll be rewarded for that through uh you know bonuses and executive compensation but if you mess with return on investment if you defraud investors which is the most important outcome of the system is return on investment then you will go to prison the all-encompassingness of neoliberalism and the way it's it, it skews or shapes the way we see almost every issue um, in our lives uh, has caused some people to say that you know neoliberalism is a it's a force of nature that we can't do anything about it it's just a natural law like gravity um, and Margaret Thatcher famously said that there is no alternative this is sometimes abbreviated as Tina there is no alternative that we didn't create neoliberalism it's not an economic system that was manufactured by humans it's just the natural way that markets function and we, we couldn't change it even if we tried it would be like like trying to change uh, gravity or the speed of sound, that um, it, it's just a natural law and all we can do is get out of the way and let it happen. And the more we get out of the way, the better it'll be for everyone. A very similar argument uh, along those lines is that we, we can't do anything about neo, neoliberalism because uh, competition and capitalism, that's just human nature. Humans, uh, by their very nature, are competitive, they're selfish, they're egotistical. Now, I would very strongly challenge that. Um, I think that if you look at the most important relationships in your life, the relationship that you have with your significant other or your children or uh, your siblings, your parents, your closest friends, um, even, even your coworkers, I would argue, uh, those relationships are probably not defined by competitiveness and selfishness and egotism. Um, that in fact, we treat the people closest to us with um, generosity, we collaborate with them, we're, we're selfless with them, or at least we try very hard to be. Um, now, I'm certainly not arguing that selfless generosity is human nature either. Um, both of both both collaboration and competition are aspects of human nature. We are capable of both of those things as a species. If you put us into a system that encourages and rewards competition, we will behave in a competitive way.
If you put us into a system that encourages and rewards collaboration, we'll behave in a collaborative way. Um, so I, I agree that competition is an aspect of human nature, but to say, oh, humans behave really competitively when we put them into a competitive system, therefore there is no other way. We cannot build any other type of system. I would really challenge that preconception.